Uh, welcome to the video of uh, my channel today. I'm Professor Khalid Khan. We are going to talk about uh, data management in clinical trials. I am based in University of Granada and with me I have uh, Daniel who is my longtime friend and an expert in data management. So Daniel, can you give a little introduction of yourself? Okay, hi Khalid. My name is Daniel Giordano. I am system analyst. I am also part of the manager, data management team at uh, Centro Rosarino Studios Peinatales, that is an official collaborative center of the WHO Health Organization. Um, and really, it's a pleasure to share with you with this video. Thank you, Daniel. We're now going to move on to look at a published trial. In this trial, in the methods section, there is a talk of primary outcome, of statistical significance, power, and various types of other statistical issues. But almost nothing is written about data management. And if in published trials there is something written, it tends to be quite brief. So the detail about how after consent, patients are randomized, data are collected and then entered into a database. This cannot be often learned from within the published article. For this reason, I've asked Daniel to come and explain uh, how this all works in real life in a trial. So a trial has a sample taken from a population that is randomized into groups and then followed up to have outcome data collected from which the effect measure is calculated. This trial plan is outlined in the protocol. Uh, this is submitted to a funding body and to ethics committee. Uh, with the approval, the trial can commence and data management begins and on trial completion the data are analyzed leading to publication. It's obvious that if there are no data there will be no clinical trial but data collection itself may have some errors that can uh, complicate uh, uh, and reduce the trustworthiness of uh, the findings of a published trial. Daniel, you want to comment on uh, the data element aspect with respect to trial trustworthiness? Yeah, the first comment is that, uh, as you can see in this flowchart, the data management uh, process should be considered from the beginning of the trial protocol uh, definition. This is a very crucial activity that really we assess for, for any uh, kind of uh, study in order to ensure that uh, variable and question requested by the protocol are collected according to the, the specification. The evaluation of the um, different methods for data collection, also um, details like uh, unit, uh, if the data will be entered manually or the data will be transferred from different laboratory machine or any kind of electronic device, also evaluate uh, the number of hospital involved, the distance, and also the responsibility of each of the teams. So uh, we really suggest that uh, uh, a person involved in the data management process can be involved in the trial protocol uh, generation. Okay, thank you. So on trial publication, there is a requirement to give uh, a statement about uh, data sharing and uh, not only in the publication but at the time of registration the plans for data sharing should uh, also be uh, given and uh, with a published trial and the shared data the acronym FAIR describes what is uh, expected to be achieved and uh, I'll request uh, Daniel to explain what this uh, acronym FAIR stands for. Yeah, um, data sharing is practically a mandatory 
request uh, currently because it's, it's very important that the data collected in, in any of the study can be reused for another people for secondary analysis or also for evaluate different aspects of this trial also to allow the interoperativity between this study with another studies or different um, national or regional databases and also the possibility to find a specific information that we are reporting in the corresponding publication uh, uh, it's like a kind of new philosophy in order to uh, prevent any bias during a statistical analysis and during the data collection process. Okay, thank you, Daniel. So, with a trial published and uh, and uh, with confidence in trustworthiness of its findings, it's possible then to move on to perform systematic reviews, create guidelines, and with this. Uh, we then are on to a journey to help improve health outcomes. Well, in a trial, during its course, the chief investigator or the principal investigator is responsible for setting up a trial management group. This should include a member of a data management team, the leader of the data management team, the principal investigator is responsible for many other aspects of the trial, including contact with ethics committee and uh, coordination with uh, research governance. And the data manager is responsible for putting the data collected into a safe location uh, that can be accessed when required, but until the end of the trial, the data being collected should be kept confidential from the investigators. Depending on trial complexity, there may be a trial steering committee and an interim confidential analysis may be required. And here the data management team is responsible for sharing the data confidentially with the independent statistician who looks at uh, the data during the trial course. May I ask uh, Daniel, Again, if uh, you can give a bit more detail about what is the role uh, and the activities of the data management team during the trial course. Yes, let us uh, show you a generic flowchart in order to visualize what are the elements and components involved in, 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 in a normal data management process. Um, the first uh, element is that you need to have a data management system in which all the information of the study should be collected uh, and requested by the protocol will be storage in this system. The first entity involved is the different hospital facility that will be in charge of the participant enrollment and also the data collection. The data collection can be divided into um, kind of uh, data collection. One is corresponding to the specific study CRF that uh, the information collected in this um, form, study form, will be used for the statistical analysis corresponding to the, the publication. And then another kind of information that can be collected in any study uh, are um, are supported by different log or sheets that are additional information that will not be part of the data set to be analyzed for the paper, but are very important for regulatory requirement or for to facilitate some activity of the medical staff and facility staff involved in the study. Another important um, characteristic of any of the data collected uh, in the study form is to ensure the anonymization of information. So there is no possibility to consider any identifiable uh, information like names, addresses, 
um, number of uh, identific national identification numbers. So this kind of information is totally prohibited to be considered in the study log. To solve this issue, not to solve, to, to ensure that anonymation of the information, you, you, you can use an, a specific subject ID, a screening ID, or any identification number that should be a specific number uh, for, for the study. Continue with the data collection form. This information will be used by a a specific local data manager team located at hospital or clinic level that will be in charge of the data entry in the data manager system. So um, there are different um, alternatives to enter data. One of the more common is the manual data entry in which uh, people read the information from a hard copy form, enter the data in, in a specific system. Another is using a tablet or mobile devices uh, through a specific apps develop in, in synchronization with the data manager system. And also there are different standards of electronic standard format that allow to communicate and, and transfer information from, for instance, laboratory uh, device to the data management system. So the, the, the alternative for our data entry should be selected based on the protocol specification and also uh, different uh, budgetary or practical uh, operat operational um, point of view. As soon the data entry is performed using like any, any of the, of the method, uh, one of the main process uh, of the data management process will be uh, uh, applied that is the data validation process in which any kind of um, validation can be implemented by the system in order to ensure that the data entering the system is correctly by numeric range, date, com date comparison, uh, biological uh, discrepancy, logical discrepancy, uh, information uh, cap captured in different uh, study forms can be compared in order to, to check if the information is the same or maybe there are some uh, problem during the data collection. So as, as, as possible the, the data validation should be very strong in order to ensure the data quality. This uh, validation process uh, um, is communicated through the, the system for another entity involved in this process that is the central data management team that will be in charge of the monitoring data monitoring across all the hospital and facility involved in the study. Then, when the data validation is uh, implemented, the um, sorry, another entity appear in this flowchart that is corresponding to the the the, the funders that uh, that's all the sponsor in which the there are different reports and also there are different kind of. Uh, uh, indicator that should be available for this entity in order to evaluate if the study is correctly implemented uh, according to the standard and the expected characteristic. Continue with the with the another um, process involved. Another entity involved uh, is the compliance group. The compliance group is a kind of team uh, of people that will be in charge of a specific verification in relation to the, the sole documents. The comparison between the sole document like a medical, um, medical record, 
uh, against the data enters in the in the system will be one of the main tasks and also evaluate if the informed consent process was correctly according to the ethical uh, consideration uh, and also to detect any protocol deviation or any um, incorrect inclusion or exclusion of the participants so in this group it's very important for regulatory requests requirements sorry uh, and also are uh, important to keep a record about what happened in the study in terms of uh, data quality this uh, this uh, special sort document verification will be uh, involved also to the local data management team in order to um, solve any discrepancy or any doubt about the, some requested information, additional information requested for that. And finally, when the, the study finalizes, there are an important process to lock the database in order to be submitted for, for the statistician and the, the final analysis. They remember that uh, in some study the, there are a particularly that some interim statistic analysis is requested based on the protocol specification. So the data management team should be very concerned about this process in order to, during the study implementation, start it in parallel with the database closing or, or locking depend on the names that you prefer, in order to solve any lack of information, missing information, data discrepancy or any data problem should be solved during the study is running, in order to arrive at the end of the recruitment practically with the database already closed. Thank you. So you can see that uh, in a gold standard process for data management, the data collected will be continuously checked for its quality, missing data collected, the data will be kept confidential, separate from the clinical team to avoid any risk of manipulation of data during the course of the study. And it's only handed to the statistician after the database is locked. Now, all of this in published trials, and here we see two examples from Daniel's center, uh, this detail is given in brief form uh, in this uh, first article under the statistical analysis section, and in the other article uh, in very brief form, but you can now see in a further article that there is a whole section on data collection provided by the journal and I think in the future we will more often see that these descriptions are being provided yeah. uh, to, to gauge and uh, uh, get the quality of the data in a trial uh, for the readers of the published article. Now Daniel, none of this can happen quickly and easily. It requires a team. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your center and your team? Yeah, yeah, well, as you know, in Argentina, we are, it's common for us to, any, any topic is re-addresses to the soccer. So, uh, for, for our job, is, is we, we totally use this rule because uh, all the, the activity that involves in, in our data management team and also for the rest of the team involve to each member of, of our team. Centro Rosalino Tudor is a, is a center that was working in the generation of evidence during 1984, so several years uh, working together and here the, the, the list and the person that we are every day working together with different uh, background medical officer, physicians, secretary, statistician, uh, account for uh, psychology, etc. So this is a, a, a big 
an important issue that uh, this kind of achievement is all only uh, possible when you work uh, in a team. Okay, thank you very much.